Thank you very much. And, and once more, welcome to this conversation this evening, sir. You are now on. Thank you very much. Uh, I should first of all thank you for organizing this um, conference. And I'm not going to repeat all that Chibudu has said. All I have to say, I only appreciate. I've read all those participating. Put me back on the picture. <coughs> So that you can see. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Well, I don't like that. Well, I don't know. So, the problem in this country is what he has elaborated. Um, both, um, coronavirus has only come to emphasize the awkwardness of our government. And I think if we are really serious about keeping this country together and making progress, it is time to restructure the country back to true federalism as we had it at independence. On this call, I think I have to elaborate on what Chibodo has said because some of the opponents of restructuring, like uh, Tako Yagasai, I listened to him. He said he doesn't understand what is restructuring. And that those who are talking about restructuring should tell us what they mean. And I'm sure this is busy in this country. All the clamoring we have been made in my own interview, in my own instruction, I have been emphasizing that those who don't understand what restructuring is, they should go and read the 1966 Constitution. And I trace it back to the constitution we are asking for is what Chivolo, Amanu Bello, and Sabdana, and Dr. Nambi Azigwe handed over to us at independence. And that agreement was made in 1954, after the collapse of the British form of government that was introduced by Mankwasi. The old country was sent back to London by Los Shandos and asked all the leaders to talk about what was the cause of the crisis at that time. Because the crisis fell on the one that Shwaulo told them that an indigenous society like ours cannot be ruled as a uniform of government. And when the collapse came, as the then colonial secretary invited all the leaders of the government. They were then elected the present leaders into London. What is your problem? It was at that conference, to the, to the credit of the Dr. Namda Zikwe, who was a unitarist, that she probably explained to them that if we really want to keep this country together, we must have to go back to federalism. On, on the satisfaction of that explanation, on return to Nigeria, Dr. Zikwe said, Federalism was imperative. What do you mean by that? It is just the autonomy of the federated states, the liberty to develop at our own space, unlike what we now have. And for the information of people like uh, Tanko Yankasai, when he says he doesn't understand what we mean, there was nothing in our constitution that created 177 and 74 local government in the country, which was joint in the north, minority in the south. And basing the number of local government on the way we are going to distribute our revenue. That was the beginning of the fraud. And when you hear people from South South and South to say, no, let's keep our income. Let us develop, let us earn our money and spend it and contribute to the federal government on a typically federal constitution. That is what is happening in America. We said no, and they agreed. It was at that conference that the question of revenue, the on the elevation basis, was agreed to. And they came back in 1954 to establish the base for federalism. It was from that on we went on to independence. And what we have there, under that constitution we had, which we are now agitating for that these federated units should be autonomous 
to the extent that each unit had a representative abroad. And I gave an example of the Western region, which you have not led at that time. He established a foreign embassy in London under that constitution to show his independence. It was ridiculed, but later on, the other regions followed. And we were the first to establish that embassy at 14A Consistency Palace Gardens in London. Federal government followed. London government followed. Eastern government followed. And I have the and I have the the the, 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 the joy to say it is that embassy in London in 1960 that I got married by the agent general who was representing Western region to show the autonomy. But now, as a result of our independence, Chipaulo was do, able to do a lot of development in the Western region. The free education, free medical services, road development, the first television in Africa. And on no occasion did he go to Valewa to ask for one penny subsidy, as I have now. now. I have to now about a video bottle economics now. Every state that go to Abuja to go out for, uh, for the allocation, which it ought not to be. Under a really federal constitution, that is that is to be taken for granted. You have you have your money, you 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 you, you find the way of getting more money for yourself and have to spend it. And you agreed on 50% to the federal government for all the subjects you allocated the federal government in the interest of the federation. That was all. That was how we had peace. Our Shibaul order the system, be the Liberty Stadium, Amadu Belo Liberty, Amadu Belo Stadium, Okara did a lot of agricultural development, and on and on. But when did the, the, these military people came, I want to refer to it that this is not our constitution. We have been repeating it that they never denied it. It is an imposed constitution by the Muslim military of the North. Nobody contributed to it. And I often refer to the fact that when uh, General Basajor was going to be installed, after the installed of civil rule, Absalom said he didn't know what was in that constitution before his falling. So he said we asked him to change the constitution and organize a sovereign national conference, he said, no, I can't take it because I, 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 I am woven to the constitution to which I swore to. And I said, which constitution do you swore to? Do you know what was there? This is the situation we're having. As a result, there's the unrest in South South because the people who have given us the money, there is no development there. At that time, the income of each region was their own. The Western region had the privilege of having the income from cocoa. The Eastern region through Papkane, the Northern region through uh, um, Granot. And we had peace. The local government, the, uh, the, the police, and security, as uh, John Waldo said, were all autonomous and we are living in peace. This was what we had on. And all the development the world was referring to during the First Republic that we compared with other regions was under the Constitution. <coughs> the military came in 1966 and changed the whole thing. And the ruling is from, from the center downwards. And nobody can say anything to the contrary. The whole thing now is you either agree with the end of the year. And unfortunately, now, I do say it's not a listening government. And I will say, without any hesitation, we are only deceiving ourselves. President Buhari is not sincere about keeping this country together. And that's why we're having this problem. That is why he's, he's putting square peg in round holes. That is why we tell you, keep to the Constitution by your appointment. You say, no, I can only work with people who do my have confidence which is against the constitution under the federal character. And the whole country was talking about it, it just turned their ears. You can go to a basis. I never addressed anybody.
this question of restructuring, we have been on for, the, for over five years now. And throughout the time that we there, the leaders what is that direction coming from, please? Sorry, go ahead, sir. Can you please stop this? It is disturbing. I don't yes, know why. Sorry, I'm uh, we're really sorry about that. Sorry, go ahead, sir. Now, all this arrangement that we are talking of, he has never found an occasion to say, this is my reaction. Even his military colleagues have now agreed with restructure. All his predecessors have agreed. All the political leaders have agreed. Even his party have agreed. And yet, our man who is to rule us, who says he's sincere, that's why I say he's not sincere. He has a private program. He has a program of his own. So if you can have the authorities of outside world or anybody to persuade Buhari, look into the question of peace in this country. We can never have peace in this country to restructure the country to back for federalism. And for the education of Tankoya Kasai, restructuring is not a philosophy. It is a way of rebuilding the, the constitution back to federalism. Because when he says, those who are talking about social, what do they mean? It's a sort of pretense because he was a par par parliamentary secretary under Balewa. Wonder what constitution was that? And he was present at the 2014 National Conference when we agreed on these things. He didn't say what was what. So there is no sincerity among the leaders of the North, particularly the far North, in the question of keeping this country together. And then, when people like me talk about the unity of this country, I have gone through it. That is why Tango Yaka said surprises me. He was one of the progressive under Amanu Aminu Kanu, opposing Zaldana's conservatism. But now I don't know what has happened. And that's why people have been saying that any far northern other full land or something, they have a private agenda. It was a progressive. But here we are. Now let us sit down together. I don't want to lose my friend from the north. Many of them have been there. He is one. He will, he will agree. But uh, that guy is another. The late by him, the Yusuf is another. There's no hatred of bitterness against northerners at all. All we want is we want a constitution under which everybody is satisfied that there is no injustice. Once there is injustice, there can be no peace. When there is no peace, no equity, there can be no development. All the other things we are doing now is to play up to the individual. And it's the same as encourages corruption. And as you all know, said, we all have the, we are going to have democracy in the country when the party that is going to rule the country is not democratic. Right now, they want to do election, you know, do uh, uh, you know, they ask the government to come and deposit 22 million for uh, an expansion of interest. How do you have that for, for that is private party contribution, not the cost of the election? Which means an election a billionaire, you cannot contest the election. However, qualify, however, you can come pay, pay you have. If your pocket is not deep, you can't contest elections. That is democracy. We have government now where constitutionalism is put aside. I had no state it obeys the, 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 the judgment that he likes. And then he believes you are not doing the right thing, it sacks you. There's no respect for the judiciary, question of separation of power. No. My dear sir. The only thing I think we should do, if anybody is interested in the progress and unity of this country, peaceably, I have to emphasize that. Because our people pay lip service to the unity of the country. When they are doing things, they have not made peace. 
and there is no peace, no equity. There can be no equity. There can be no agreement. There can be no peace. So I will apply. I will plead with Bori to join good work, the good um, the lobby citizens of this country to sit down. We don't want the country to break. The crisis of socialism of say, oh, you have to research, you have to break the country. Who wants to break the country? A person like me? 50% of my life has been built on the question of the United country. In 1979, I spent over one year in, uh, in northern in the northeast, where there's Boko Haram now, fighting for the Union Party of Nigeria. I could have saved my Western region. And so also the, all the leaders of the Union Party went all over the country because we want the country together. Not the unity of the horse and the rider. It is the unity where the, where the Lord will pay the rider and we be the horse. So this is what is called the disrespect or this unity or this harmony in the country. It's a simple matter. If Bwari is serious about keeping these countries together in peace, not by force. What is wrong when I tell him, Mr. President, are you wiser, more intelligent, more Fulani than Saudana that agree to this constitution as independent? Are you more educated? If all these questions cannot be answered in negative, why can't you go back to what the forefathers give us? And when you talk of going back to the ninety constitution, we are not necessarily saying go back to four regions or three regions. Those are matters of details. But the contents of the power in the regions there is what we want to be given to the federated units. We can be independent and see one. We have regional autonomy under the federal system, just as we have in Africa. But under this constitution, you have drawn a lot of inequalities. You mago mago the election, the, the, the population. It is in our own country now where the nearer the desert, the greater population. Not in America, not in Australia, not in New Zealand. It is only in Nigeria where the nearer the desert, the more the population. Thank you very much, sir.